everybody can everybody go into the chat box and let's hear let's let's hear how you're feeling give us your check-in word everyone let's let's have a listen in say maybe where you're from what country you're from and how you're feeling how you feeling whether it's this afternoon this morning for paul it's tonight very late at night 9 30 p.m for him he's still managing to give us his golden nuggets. Yeah, so I'll give you my last my last energy of the hour of the day and see how it goes. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so Lisa's from Bloberg Strand in beautiful Cape Town. And let's hear your words. How's, let's hear your words. Let's hear your words. Oh. Lena from South Africa, she is excited. Okay, welcome, Lena. So lovely to have you here. Okay, let's hear some more. Right, Catherine, Cape Town. Nina from Johannesburg, South Africa. Divine. Okay, so you're all saying where you're from, but you're not giving a check in word. So uh -huh. what? Second word. <laughs> Got to be something. Oh, Lisa worked with Paul in Bermuda. Wow, that's awesome. Nice for you. Hey, Lindy from Centurion. She is ready to absorb all the information. Love it, Lindy. Anna's interested. Nice. Okay. Yes, lucky you, Lisa. Amazing. My, my word for right now is I'm freezing. I'm not sure why, but the temperature's dropped here and I'm shivering, I'm so cold for now. Okay, so Rita and Danae from Cape Town are excited. Emma Mena is excited and delighted to be joining this meeting. Oh, beautiful. Thank you, I'll wait till you hear what's in store. I've had the privilege of hearing 20 minutes. Me too, I can't wait to hear what's in store. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> So I was lucky enough to hear 20 minutes and um, today I'm excited because I'm going to hear the end of the story that I never got to hear and I'm super excited about that. Okay, who else has a check-in word? We have somebody from Zambia online. Sam, how are you feeling? Karen from KZN. Let's hear how you feeling. Corin has no phone, so she's feeling phoneless, I'm sure. And who else? We've got some ladies from Botswana. Come on, everybody, don't be shy. Let's all get your check in. Oh dear, Samantha says she's stressed. Okay, so now is your time, Sam, to calm down. Let's absorb all this amazing information. It's going to give us more ideas, make us more curious, actually. Which is going to be, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's going to be amazing. Okay, Karen's frustrated with technology, but she's happy to be with us. Shani that's, is, I, I, that's my comment, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Shani from Charlotte, North Carolina, excited to learn. Okay, divine. Nomsa from Botswana, divine to have you here, Nomsa. Emma from Joburg is looking forward to hearing the info. Here comes Lanil, divine. For some reason, it keeps asking me to admit people. I'm just admitting them. I'm not an admin, per, I'm not a controller or anything, but uh, I'm admitting them. Yeah, I'm you letting them in, Paul. You can relax. Oh, you're doing it, okay. <laughs> we'll do it. We'll yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, Corin. Oh, thank you, Corin. I've had a hydroglow treatment today. That's why my skin is all glowy. Um, Umpo. Yes, there is a glow. <laughs> I tried to mattify it before I went on, but it didn't work because it's proper glowing. Umpo from Pretoria, glad to be here. Absolutely divine. Okay, everybody else is a little bit shy. No problem. Okay, everyone. So this is super exciting. Let me tell you a little bit about Paul. And then if he wants to, he can tell you a little bit more about himself. But really, Paul has been in our industry for 26 years. His experience has been global and 
all encompassing that include responsibilities as a professional traveling awards judge for the World Spa Awards Association and a speaker since 2014. So he started as a fitness trainer and massage therapist, spending 17 years working at director level and specifically working within luxury hotel groups like Fairmont, Jumeirah, Rosewood, um, as well as corporate roles in Canada, Bermuda, Dubai, Phuket, and Thailand. And most recently, he's joined, I um, hope I'm saying it correctly, Dusset International in May 2020 as Corporate Director of Wellness based in Bangkok, Thailand. And all I can say is that you're in for a treat and I'm in for the rest of my treat because like I said, I got to hear 20 minutes and today I'm going to hear the rest of this amazing discussion. So over to you, Paul. Thank you, Medissa. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm in Bangkok, Thailand. It's 9 p.m. And um, yeah, I look forward to speaking with you. And I have a presentation. I can show you some slides. And my, my preamble is usually um, uh, precursed by saying that, you know, what I speak about and my perception is just that. I'm not here to say that this is the way it is for anybody or what you should do, uh, especially when it comes to wellness and your guests or your market or the people that you work with, or your associates. But it's, it's pretty much, you know, close to my heart, uh, what I think is important, um, what we're committed to, what we're responsible to for our guests and for associates. And hopefully it's something that can um, spark something for you. And, and just like, um, you know, kind of my mission actually is to heal, heal all of our guests globally with Thai healing uh, principles, you know, modalities, ancient techniques. And um, that's quite easy because there's a lot of content and a lot of rich um, history there. So it's been just a matter of trying to um, um, harness what works for us because it can, it can be so vast and confusing for people. So we try to pin it down. But um, in the same regard, as I do that internally, my mission is to, to hopefully that, that, that catches on and is, it can be a wave um, um, of wellness, just the way you know, TCM or Vedic uh, principles and modalities are very well understood and, and, and global um, that Thai wellness can. And when I say Thai wellness, you'll, I'll, I'll show you what we're doing. Um, I mean, beyond the Thai massage, as we all know, is represented quite well across this, the world as a representation in a spa menu or an offering or like a Balinese massage, for example. Um, but also, I think the message that I've been getting out or trying to uh, permeate our industry with is that wellness is, and you know, it kind of speaks a little bit to the title of this without any mistitling. It says wellness in hospitality, but I think it's much richer and much deeper than that. And it's actually synonymous with hospitality because when we say wellness in, it's still bipartisan, it's still kind of separable. It's still something in addition to or an adjunct to. And for me, they're inseparable. And for me, first and foremost, I'm in hospitality, whether it was a fitness trainer, or working in hotels, being a big massage therapist. Um, first and foremost, I, I'm in the hospitality industry. And I'm, I'm not sure where everybody's coming from in different realms, different, different positions and different, different responsibilities. So my speak is a little bit more to do with that uh, and that model and that, and that kind of tourism industry. But um, I do feel that wellness is um, something that all of our guests are coming to us with uh, some level of concern or need. And so that's how we address it. That's, that's how I've developed our concept. That's how we go about um, approaching what we do and what we're rolling out. Um, and I think ultimately the best thing about that is, hey, what a great time to be in wellness industry, whatever, you know, anybody who's listening or anybody who, who's, who, who's at these conferences and these presentations, um, it's, I think it's the best time. It's, 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 it's not just, and some people, you know, I do speaks where they say, what are the trends? Uh, what's 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 uh, what's hot and for me wellness isn't a trend anymore it's a massive tsunami that's coming and, and I use that analogy because you know I, I, I what I have been able to do a lot of in the last two years is read and assess and get a gauge of through LinkedIn and through 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 all the same vehicles I guess that you would listen to or hear um, uh, books and articles I save them I read them and I digest it for one to make sure that I'm in the right pulse to make sure that I and it all that plus my, you know, my 26 years of experience and my passion to do what's good for our company and the best interest of our guests is to, um, uh, you know, to assimilate it, that, that information to go forward in the best possible way. But I feel that there's not, not everyone's awake yet to that. It's like an awakening that it's not just something to do for some of the guests. It's something that we're responsible to do for all of our guests. Um, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll go, I'll happy to go through what we do and some examples 
um, that work for us and and maybe it'll trigger something that you think of that you that you can do for you right so i'm, I'm sure you've all you've all got as much experience as i do but this is my perspective and my, my vision on it so so without further ado i guess i'll be able to share my screen that went pretty well i think do you do you see it am i showing my screen you are sharing your screen yep Yes, we so, can so uh, the, the, I named the app also in the name of the title here um, of the, uh, the presentation. And Distant Wellness is there, not because I'm trying to uh, promote us, it's just it's one of my decks and it's a PDF and, and that is what it is. So um, I'm not trying to commercialize anything from my side, but uh, I'm so beyond the spa. And um, when I speak to this, I, I was born from spa, right? So, so I was a trainer, I was a massage therapist in Canada, and I began as a therapist and even like up until three years ago, I still perform treatment sometimes on VIPs or special guests. So it is who I am. And uh, it is a very important part of, you know, the, the, the framework of wellness. That's why I say not the spa or forget about the spa. I say beyond the spa is in meeting addition too. So, and I'll get into to, to what that means and what that looks like. Um, and, and what a great uh, um, opportunity we have in hotels to become uh, uh, more than, than just the spa. So. like this sorry you can still see it okay so I, I i this is a bit of a justification slide which i don't think is really overly necessary with anybody on this call i believe we're all aware of the of the growth and the, what, the, the potential and the possibilities that are within these bubbles and this is a data slide i think i think susie and the tell team will come out with a new one uh, uh this year when they do the new conference i'll be massively different but what i speak to here is obviously wellness tourism uh, but all the bubbles together uh, at the growth of the mental health uh, uh, bubble, which is not you know, mental wellness, but it's a bit more uh, focused now. But the message that I receive about this that still sticks with me that I share is that um, this is 4.5 trillion, and it's probably up around 4.8 or 5, uh, 2022, is that this is larger globally than the pharmaceutical industry. So that's just a justification that it's not a shift. It's a massive wave that's, that, that's coming as far as people's consciousness and really a shared value that society has, not just about tourists that travel. Um, tourists that travel are just a segment of the entire population, which is very wellness minded. Um, so, so I think that is ultimately really where the opportunity, opportunity lies, which is all of our guests, right? Really, and all of us, right? This one is a slide we use to uh, present uh, internally um, at corporate level, and it's um, also a little bit dated. So I'd be interested to see what these numbers look like. Um, this is pre-pandemic 2020, and the 84% are wellness focused, 82% uh, uh, seeking unique experiences, and 53% environmentally conscious. Which that one I would imagine we'll see uh, the biggest increase in the, in the next uh, next type of uh, round of um, research. And then I get into, for us, I'm sure this is all um, well understood, but I kind of use it as a drawing, and on my next slide as well, to pull us out of a spa uh, mindset and mentality. And I preface it that um, most hotel operators consider um, this, uh, this, this first half of this deck and what we've designed or what we consider, and I hope the others, uh, as a shift and a tsunami that's coming, uh, is, the, is the below and the, and, and the blue font. So as we know, uh, spa is a place and so it has confines, it's a, it's, it's, it's a location, and there's only so much we can do for our guests when they, with, with a spa, because uh, anybody raise their hand, if they got more than 10% capture, that'd be beautiful, but uh, most, you know, uh, in Dubai, the days are in two to four, and in you know, resorts, even Burj Al Arab as an all-suite uh, uh, hotel was 22%. I know Maldives, we had other locations when I was, when I was overseeing those about 24%, and that was, in, you know, in the good, good, good 2008 high business contract days as well, right? So, so a spa is only going to capture a certain amount of guests, but wellness is all of our guests. So, you know, we sought a solution for that. Um, the other um, definition that uh, I'm sure we're aware of at this point, but the interesting part I say when about wellness is that, you know, I remember being part of conferences and the big topic was wellness. What is wellness? Nobody and nobody put their hand up. Nobody could define it. Nobody could really be confident enough to speak about it because everybody had a lot of opinions and perspectives about it. I think it still exists because there's medical wellness and there's all types of different modalities. I think it's fair to say that um, there should be definitely some parameters if you're going to say that you're claiming wellness. And I've got a few put in here as well. 
And I'm not saying that we claim a deep wellness either. We're not, we're not super transformational by any means, like a, a destination spa, Kamalaya, Chivasam, and others. And maybe people here are, are also representing some of those locations. Um, but because it's a pursuit, it's a moving target. It's an active uh, choice of uh, lifestyle choices that lead to holistic health. So everybody's on a different journey and, and also should be non-judgmental and more inspirational than, than uh, uh, kind of committed to. So um, that's kind of ambiguous, I guess we'll say, because it's more of an adjective. It's, it's, it's more of a, a doing and an ongoing uh, pursuit. Uh, and as we know, I think well-being is well understood that it's just the state. It's when we're actually in that moment of um, the, if the investment that we've made or the time or the energy is paying off and we have an emotional uh, connection to it, healthier, happier, or um, uh, get, uh, obtaining our goal or, or result that we might have been seeking for that. Um, and then I speak to sustainability, which um, is kind of like spa. It's also for us a, a dated uh, term because it's a maintaining. So we move more towards, which I think is a well understood now, a regenerative term. We're still trying to get our head around that the way maybe wellness was 10 years ago. What's it look like for us? And how do we how do we move into that space more than sustainability? But because sustainability is um, uh, this, the, 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 the kind of the claim of maintaining. So it's not better, it's sustaining something. So the way I use this term internally in our company is if we were to remove a hotel from its location, we didn't do any damage. We, 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 we turn it to its you know, previous state. We didn't um, um, have any, do any harm. Uh, and we almost like we weren't there. But really the, the answer to that should be what is better in that location because we were there or we still are there. So what's better for the people, the farmers, the land, the environment, our associates, their families, uh, the community uh, and the guests and how do they interact with us when they stay with us. So we moved more into a regenerative traveler mindset. Um, and the next one I won't go into is detail has to do in some other presentations because I think we're all aware about the secondary and the primary wellness tourist. And to, re to recoup on that, that the secondary wellness traveler, uh, as we, I believe we would know, you know, it's 80% of the guests that travel in this space and there it's a secondary purpose for their travel. Uh, it's something that maybe has helped them um, decide where to go as a destination um, or a location or, or, or a hotel itself or a chain or a brand, but not a main influencer. It's something they do along the way, but it's something that helped the decision making. Um, and then the primary being purposeful, obviously they're sitting in front of the keyboard uh, with, with, with needing something uh, by the time they've finished their week, be it a program, a retreat, a consultation, uh, 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 intervention, whatever it might be, because you're usually in you know, a trauma or a serious stress or, or unfortunately maybe even a health, a health concern. Um, and we know that, you know, the numbers say that about 20% are in that, that range. But what we're saying, and the, the deck that I'll continue to show you and, and unpack for you, is that all the way I see it is that all guests and travelers are now wellness travelers. So whether secondary, primary, or, uh, or neither of those, everybody is coming to our hotel. We work from the front office perspective all the way through um, with, with them embracing and understanding that all the guests coming are uh, needed some kind of attention um, and it doesn't mean that they're, you know, mental trauma or seriously stressed, but just to see them through that mindset and, and, and hospitality and relationship building type of mentality that all of our guests are coming um, with that kind of uh, shared uh, value or principle or insp inspiring uh, kind, of, kind of journey. Uh, and I'll get to what that looks like uh, for us. And really ultimately, I think, and, and that kind of last of the lines in the bottom here is that I think as, as more and more, as certainly it's a, it's a competitive advantage if you do have some of these things in place. And when I say things in place, I mean beyond the spa. Because we know spas permeate most hotels, most properties. It's beautiful, it's great, it's also important and it's very commercialized and, and uh, we need to monetize that and it's part of our investment. But um, I think as, as more and more guests increasingly filter their travel experiences through a holistic wellness lens, they'll expect nothing less. And the analogy I use here a little bit is when a guest travels to a hotel, in my experience again, um, through all the hotels I've worked at, chains, they're looking for something more. They're, they're traveling for something that they can't get at home. Why, why go if you, you know, why go there if you're just gonna have the same experience you do at home? You go for many reasons. Um, wellness obviously uh, is now become a bigger one, but as an example, you know, uh, you go to a hotel and you, you kind of expect the TV to be nicer than what you have in your home, right? You expect the pool to be bigger. Uh, and if you have a big pool, then you're probably gonna go somewhere with a private villa. You're always upscaling to do something that's uh, more exciting, more engaging, um, and maybe a bit, a bit different, because that's where you enjoy a bigger bed, a bit nicer sheets, whatever it might be, a better view. Um, 
So, so if most guests are now traveling through a wellness space, they most have massages, they've had meditation or yoga, they're doing something at home. There's most people that are trying to eat healthy, more healthily, um, read, educate themselves, then why would a hotel not try to exceed their expectations, if not even meet them? So, and if you, and, and there's, no, there's, no, there's no wrong path in trying to implement something that's beyond a spa, um, because your guests will appreciate it, right? They'll, they'll obviously, uh, you know, uh, maybe they have zero wellness plan. They never used the term before, but you might wake them up and inspire them to take that path. You could have a massive influence on people through the vehicle of going to your hotel. Um, and what better thing to do for your guests than to, to, to provide that kind of life possible, life-changing um, experience, or at least something that will plant a seed um, for, for a future uh, understanding, or maybe they'll, uh, be more educated about a class or about a modality um, or something that somebody said or did for them that when they go home they can be better to the family or share that and, and really I guess be ambassadors for wellness right for, for, for the bigger purpose and reason right but it's certainly a competitive advantage to it and and, uh, and I've got some examples if I can remember to circle back to that piece of the conversation so this one is um, I guess um, speaking about the democratization and a little bit deeper into you'll understand what I'm speaking about a little bit more but the first column here would speak to what we all well know, and maybe even at this point, I think it's two years ago, this, this slide dated, all right? Um, not dated as in nobody's doing it, but we're obviously evolving and adapting and, and moving towards a more uh, compelling experience for our guests. So you can read uh, you know, the first eight to 10 uh, bullet points there, and, and I'm sure you can probably get the slides, but um, the, the highlighted space is what I'm kind of now really drawing out of what I was speaking about so far, and that um, a lot of spas or hotels have still compartmentalized and heavily structured and for the most part inaccessible wellness. So that's where we speak about, you know, capture, right? So most, most, and a lot of things that I read, read on LinkedIn or different GMs or different hotel managers, they'll say, you know, well, wellness, you know, during pandemic and during COVID, um, we closed, you know, it's expensive, we're going to open, it's important, but we don't have the investment, we can't, we, we're going to close it until we open again, um, or we don't have our spa manager. So even for us, you know, the first teams to kind of get cut and the last ones to get back on to some extent if we're turning that the tide on that is your wellness team right because a lot of you know we really had to contract payroll and manning as i'm sure many people did and when you have less guests come and less spend obviously the, you know you have a three percent capture in your spa well you, to start with and then, then you're the first to, to get foddered right uh and furloughed um because they have that mindset that it's a contained space where only 3% of the guests go, not realizing the potential to have wellness impact all of your guests and what that could look like for you as a competitive advantage. Um, and that's where I speak about um, integrating wellness touch points throughout the guest experience. Now, I was speaking quite loud and proud of this up to about six months ago and I had to reframe what I, the way I speak about this a little bit because there's companies who've done that. I mean, we know Accor and Fairmont and others and even hotels. Sure, they've, in, they, they've also integrated well-being touch points um, across their hotels. And this is more of something I'm speaking without thinking too much about, but I also think it was very compartmentalized. It's, a, it's, a, it's an in-room suite or it's something that some guests would have. Um, obviously, we can't compare it to like an even hotels if you're aware of that because it's, every hotel room has it. But it's still something specific in your book, and uh, it's like your room with your fit, with your fitness equipment in there, or a specific menu, or what have you. But again, if you were to stand outside of um, that hotel, uh, obviously every guest would have a sentiment that there's some kind of wellness experience ingrained because it's more of a destination, I guess you can say. So that's how I back myself out of that conversation. But uh, uh, our goal, uh, and you'll see how we've done that, is that if we have um, Hotel A and Hotel Dusit next to each other and we have the same guests go through both properties for three days and neither one of them go to a spa and we have a survey at the end of their stay and we ask them, what was your sentiment? How do you feel? What, 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 did, you, what did you experience? Without pulling adjectives or having words for them to say, but just to openly speak to us that at the Dusset Hotel, they would hopefully say something about they felt more cared for. Um, they probably wouldn't say anything specific about, you know, I, I, you know, you took care of my wellness or I feel better, I don't feel as tired, but the sentiment would speak around that enough that we'd be able to say, yeah, this, these things that we've done are drawing these, uh, the, the, these uh, responses from our guests, which creates loyalty and, and just a positive sentiment. And we are designing surveys differently so that we can kind of uh, justify that as well. But I've got examples where we put some of these things in place uh, in our hotel, um, and it's the first time in my experience that the general manager said that it's helped with, uh, with market positioning uh, uh, and helped with occupancy. Uh, and at the time, not rate yet. It wasn't something we could build up enough because the situation were mostly domestic still to really command getting a higher hotel rate. 
which ultimately is the ultimate goal for me, is that if I can get a if I can get up uh, occupancy and I can get up rate of a hotel in the room, never going to make enough money in a spa to over supersede that. You can almost forget my spa money, right? It's millions versus you know hundreds and hundreds of millions, right? So, um, and, and and to do something better for our guests uh, and still uh, drive revenue to the spa. And the way we've done it actually is a circular economy where it does do just that and it does bring 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 guests to maximize our spa as well. So. So without further ado, I guess to some extent, I'm not going to delve into this too much because it's a bit of a sales pitch, but just speak to the to the to the brown font there that you know this is the kind of where I get into the concept that I developed and my team developed for for just it, that we have a commitment. Okay, that's fine. We understand that, you know, we, are, we we appreciate that our guests are increasingly health conscious, we have those aspirations. So that means we have looked to have a deep commitment and a responsibility to them. Um, so that when they come to our hotels. They have an option. So this is the important part. They have an option or they're inspired um, to achieve a healthier, or happier life. They don't have to do anything to do with what, what we are going to present to you, but it's there. So the responsibility that we have through our commitment to wellness, by having a wellness team of corporate and, and, and even having these conversations and, and working in this direction, is that in our hotels, they're more purposeful stays, purposeful restoration, and ultimately creating a more uh, conscious form of hospitality, I guess you can say. And that's where I get back into the earlier kind of my opening statement that wellness is synonymous with hospitality, not wellness in hospitality, because then it's separable. And for me, it's not it's not separable in, in my mindset. Um, so then we get into so ultimately, like my little kind of nice slogan, I can say this probably without looking because I've, I've said it so many times. But so wellness with this is not about a time on service or experience, but it's thoughtfully and kind of uh, generously integrated throughout their stay. So it's more passively done than, than them actively having to participate. Um, and we do that through daily rituals uh, and frame micro moments. Uh, this is a bit of a sales thing, says drive customer satisfaction, but really uh, fostering lifestyle changes. So we call them micro moments because they're not independently transformational. So obviously you can go to a program, you can do a meditation, you can do a longer time bound service experience for a transformational type of a, a, a outcome. Um, but these are like kind of like the analogy is, uh, you know, we cut you with a thousand cuts, if you will, and we do smaller things along the way that uh, all of our guests can experience versus a couple things some guests can experience, which that still obviously can happen and, and, and does happen. So, and examples of that are um, on my slide. So our concept is based on a slowing down, the deceleration methodology. So that we created a, uh, some pillars here. And so it's pause, focus, and growth. Um, pause being, as you can imagine, they're all pretty self-descriptive, but pause, breath work, mental, mental awareness, uh, uh, vibration, frequency, um, 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 yoga, things like that. Um, the, mental, the mental health, mental well-being, mental detachment uh, uh, facets, focus being a bit more about the, the body, the aesthetic, the nutrition, the things you do, uh, exercise, looking good, feeling good. So nothing wrong with being muscular or flexible or aesthetically pleasing, uh, good skin health. Um, on that, you know, the beauty side, the grooming side, a little bit in there. And then growth being, which has now just come out actually interestingly from Global Wellness Institute, talking about people wanting to grow intellectually and move past these two phases actually. And not that they're outdated, but it's migrated into a growth um, 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 mindset, I guess, mindset, um, where people want to learn and, and expand their horizons and get access to information and continue to push the limits for themselves. And uh, for us, though, it, up until this point, it, it more means the combination of pause focus and also when you invest longer times with us, programs, retreats, workshops, classes, and then as we try to keep our relationship with you after you, you, you leave uh, the properties. Or, or hotels. So what that looks like in real time, these are examples. And one of the things that I was very um, committed to do when I set up this concept um, was the first maybe the one and a half concepts I've done before, because most of them are pre preconceived, you know, Fairmont and, uh, and Rosewood, it was all pretty much in place. You deliver them, you commercialize them, you can probably expand upon them. But this is the first actually with just a full concept start to finish that I've created. And one of the things that I wanted to I promise myself, you know, because as, as, a, as, a, as a judge, awards judge, travel to so many spas and what happens on the website, or I should say it doesn't happen, but what's on the website or what's on their uh, for sure, all these beautiful descriptions and what they say they're going to do and how they're going to operate as a kind of a brand essence in the descriptors doesn't really come to fruition when you come. You know, you go to a spa and you ask the front office, what's your concept? 
uh, it's the product line and that's kind of what we do, or there's no depth to it because it's a selling, it's a bit soft. And unfortunately, I think that's where a little bit spas have gone sideways and maybe a little bit of trust and credibility um, needs to be awoken in, in what we do with wellness. I say that's one of the, one of the credentials um, to claim wellness in a spa environment, which which I'm not I'm not the the, the prover of that, but um, I think it's I think it's important. But so when I say you know we create a create a concept, okay, what does that look like for the guests? What are we doing? How does that come to life? How do we make that sustainable, and consistent, and how, how does that really does it really matter? Is it something that's important? So so this is an example of, of pause. So for our guests, we do. Um, uh, the first image is in our, in our lounge, arrival lounge. It's not the spa, so it's just a few pages. This is the front office of the hotel. So our guests, as they arrive, have one of three choices of a uh, of our essential oil on their palm. Obviously, we all well know that that essential oil through our through our through our lymphatic and nervous system. But then they're asked to take a deep breath, close their eyes, and inhale, and that's kind of the pause moment, right? So it's a micro moment. It's a fraction of forty seconds. But it's a moment to cleanse from their travel as they kind of like a gateway to go forward and, and experience their time with us. It's kind of a cleansing and a meditative awakening where we kind of flick a switch for them. Um, and obviously, it's the benefit of essential oils. And you can imagine, okay, so this is Thailand, but then you speak about Dubai or Oman or, or Singapore, where it's a bit more impactful when you have a Thai healing uh, 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 journey like this in a different country. Um, and then we have, um, and also I find that check-ins at a lot of hotels are very procedural um, and certainly become more so uh, during the pandemic with, you know, travel forms and you have your coughing and you have your vaccines and, and all this type of extra layers of paperwork and signing in that it's dangerously can become quickly um, too comfortable and like a whole, an airport check-in and it's a hotel, right? So you're walking into your home. So getting back a little bit to those types of touch points uh, was important to us. Um, and then, um, we have a similar one at the pool. And so we have this iced misters that we send around the pool with our, with our, with our, with our team um, every couple of hours or as the guests move around that uh, we also, again, we ask them to choose and then, then we spray for them. It's a misting, they close their eyes. And again, it's just a couple of seconds, a scent, uh, a moment to breathe. Um, um, and these scents are not as serious, if you want to call that as far as uh, the essential oils are, uh, we develop when you think mango, pina colada, and bubble gum, so a little more fun and playful. Um, but this love, you know, hydration and, and, and moisturizing impacts and effects. So, uh, and the last one is a turndown card that we do for the guests on the first night of their stay for every guest. Little card, a little sleeve, uh, maybe it's about this big, I have one somewhere. And uh, their quotes inside. So, so conscientious awareness. Uh, I think you might be able to read this one. Um, teachings for an enriched life. This goes on the pillow. So the guest comes back uh, after dinner or after they're out with a little away time. And it's a turned out card that also is dual uh, Thai, English, Arabic, uh, Japanese on uh, whatever side it is. So again, the contemplative micro moment. Maybe if I was to watch 100 guests, two of them would rip it up, one would throw it in the garbage, 90 would read it and maybe quite, you know, have a moment of, mm, yeah, that's something you know um maybe 50 percent will put it in their in their suitcase take it home and, and put it on their mirror or keep it so so with that there's a couple of things to this there's other examples there's other things we do but this is something to focus on um in addition to the benefit of what i mentioned these are the three touch points that 95 percent all guests would um, have uh, access we'd have access to them through these vehicles um it's it's I, I'd, I'd actually put a challenge out there and i'd love to hear how you be able to put fifty thousand pot to invest uh, in a wellness concept, I can touch every guest because it's also very low cost, low, 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 not expensive at all to do to keep to keep going and sustain. But it's also, uh, if you haven't picked up yet, it's a it's an act of branding, it's an act of promotion. Our logo is there right from the first go without saying, "Here's a spa and here's the offer and it's a two for one." Here's a credit. They know there's a spa on property and they know that's something that we think about and that's important to us. And again, we hit them at the pool. And then again at night, right? And this is all on their first day, most likely, right? So um, the turndown card also now we've developed it. It goes into a little um, kind of a queuing, another queuing, uh, uh, word, but it prompts them that there's also meditation videos on the TV for, for sleep, because uh, it says deeper sort of sleep. So it's part of the sleep program. And we just launched those videos last week um, at one hotel and we'll do the global rollout. I've got a slide on that, I think. So, so it's kind of, the, the, the interesting thing is it can evolve, it, it can change, you can do more things. 
Um, um, and then the other layer to this is besides the promotional part and the benefit and everything else I mentioned is that it's a relationship touch point that, uh, that into get causes another genuine interaction between our associates, our teams and our hotel and our guests, which in our hotel group is something that something that's needed, uh, I would say, and, and, very, and very important um, to, to do so as, as a more of a luxury, I guess, uh, refined uh, touch point. And they're all tie inspired to the DNAs. And that kind of thing, so. Uh, so yeah, this is our video. So we've done the videos, we actually produced them internally with a Thai uh, practitioner, um, uh, a wellness and emotional healing coach, and uh, they're based on pause, focus and growth. And those are in the rooms now. And we'll use those also for um, for conferences, for meetings, breakout sessions. We can put it up on the big screen and so forth. And so the power here again is that it's a Thai practitioner in a Thai background, Thai environment, uh, and it'll be in a global uh, rollout to our hotels. So so that's uh, so Thai obviously is uh, is deep in our DNA. Uh, and that's a good thing. Um, so shifting gears a little bit out of the, the overall hotel. Uh, micro moments and how we deal with every guest. There's one more example is to do with nutrition. I think it might be later on, but then the other one that I speak about um, that we put in place, we speak more about directly the spa operation itself that I, that I, I feel, and I felt I wasn't able to really claim to say that we had a wellness operation versus a spa operation without addressing our consultation form or consultation intake, whatever you call it, because ultimately I think it's a real defining, um, uh, principle approach um, um, that if you're going to call some, you know, your operation a spa to a wellness, that you have to have a deeper consultation because wellness is about having an outcome, a benefit, a result, and understanding your guests better to be able to do that. And then obviously what happens in between there is important as well. And that's up to everybody uh, independently. But for us, that was something that we felt was quite important. And I'll put my hands up or my hands down and say that we're not deep wellness. We don't have, um, um, health coaches, we don't have gurus on teams, we work with them, we collaborate with them, and we have good talent, but we're not, you're not checking into an environment where we have somebody to do, you know, Kakamalaya, a deep, proper wellness consultation, as a lot of people would explain it. So we're kind of emerging, mixing, and again, there's a lot more we do than, than, than what I'm showing you, but when you add them together, I can, I can stand for myself and claim wellness in, 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 when everything adds up together and the guest leaves. Uh, we've had that kind of that kind of that kind of leaning towards versus versus a uh, spa only, uh, if you want to say that. So with that, what we do is the consultation form, just to kind of let you know what we do. We've uh, uh, moved away from you know a check in where it's kind of again procedural. Uh, are you pregnant? Are you have any uh, allergies? Where's your pain? Uh, any medications and so forth? To interactive. So this is done with I think it's this is where the experience starts with the guest. Um, with our, this is, this is actually um, the Meridian Lines, and this is an image that's been a little bit more modernized, but it comes from the temples of Wat Po in Bangkok, where the Thai schools for healing are. And in our, in our CID and in our creative teams and the branding in the hotels at corporate level, we didn't want to move back too far into the history and use things that are like ancient looking or too historic, as beautiful as they are. We need to move things in, into the future with a new CID and a new look and feel. Um, so we've updated that a little bit, it's a little more simplistic looking, but so this is where the guest indicates where their issues are and you consult with your therapist for, and then they can confirm back where they are. And it helps because all of our teams are mostly Thai, even internationally. So it's a good bridge between the language as well. Um, and just for clear understanding, because I'll tell you, I've been in Bangkok, I've been in Thailand for three years and I've had not one therapist, I don't mean in my hotels, other, other places, but to address my concerns because they're very much kind of standardized and the English gets lost and yeah, yeah, we'll do that. But and never gets never gets really addressed, and there's no confidence in that happening really, unless you go to a more upscale uh, kind of location. But um, to your day to day time massage for five hundred baht, I guess that's what you that's what you expect, right? Uh, but it's still good. Um, so then we get into asking the guest um, the three Ds of wellness for us, and that is uh, whether they're more inclined today, in addition to the massage and the technique or the treatment they chose through the menu description of detoxing, uh, de-stressing, or their deep sleep. And then when they take that, that leads us into how we develop the oils or the, or you can see the picture there. We have a mixing lab in our, in our reception areas. We've created this new uh, reception area where it's a bit of a, a experiential uh, mixing of the oils and the and a clays of the products, if it's a scrub or wrap. And then the ancient healing, the, the Tadzi, that's how we choose the oil base. So then we go into our little, with the consultation form, we go into the uh, mixing area and mix it for the guests, like three or four or five different oils 
with the base oil that you can see in the tube based on the um, TADC. And then the guest takes that test tube and we walk them into the room with it. So there's no more plastic, no bottles in the room. So it's a recycling kind of journey. And it's a little bit interactive. So it all adds up together to be something that's a bit more, uh, uh, they're very aware of what's happening versus, you know, um, I, I, I worked at a wellness uh, pretty permanent one. Um, and, we, we, and we had the, uh, it, I mean, it's been in place for 40 years, right? Energizing, revitalizing, and, 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 um, and soothing oils. I already mixed aromatherapy and you smell them and it's not deep enough. It's, uh, so, so we curate it and make it for them. Uh, and then after the treatment, we also have a specific tea for them that is also uh, the ingredients of the tea is beneficial for specifically their aspiration or their need, detox, de-stress, or deep sleep, and they get the recipe card and so forth for that. So, so it's like a fun, they, 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 we listen, we did, and then we follow through with um, a, a kind of a, a, a home care. Uh, uh, so if you're going as a couple, for example, and you have a detox and a de-stress, you have two different journeys all the way through right up to getting the tea. And I think these things get so conscious, you know, consciously the guests become aware of that we're that we're doing something more bespoke, I guess you can say personalized um, curating. And of course, we do just to speak to the the, the more formal um, programs and retreats, we do have as well uh, multi-day programs with uh, specific, purposeful, somewhat transformational um, um, uh, outcomes. The middle picture actually just this last three days ago uh, we launched uh, our wellness retreat and a program at uh, Dusitani Wahin and when I say beyond the spa what we did this is our practitioner and she actually is the one we did the videos with as well so we wanted to present these are all media and, and, uh, and, and agents and so forth that are sitting there we wanted to bring the actual practitioner who did the videos for us to do the actual video for them live but then what you know this one example of the things that we do we try to think about you know our guests um, in a hotel, when, when they come to a hotel, they get, you know, pre-confirmation and they get, uh, you know, maybe a call before or a confirm reservation and we book things for them. But in the wellness space versus a spa space, we, I, I see that this is where the hotel starts and we start before that. We, we, so we send a welcome gift beforehand. We send meditation beads to them with a note uh, to preempt uh, and drive a bit of a, a anticipation of their stay, right? So then actually they're all wearing white because we have branded uh, Thai pajamas. We do as a turn down to come to the morning session. So they all feel very comfortable. They all feel uh, Zen and they feel a bit more um, in tune with what's happening. And of course it makes for, for more uh, aesthetically pleasing photos when it was addressed as such. So, so, so we do different things like that. So this is where it comes into the, uh, the food part. So again, we're not uh, specific menu based on, you know, vegan or gluten-free or, I mean, we can do those things, but as a general broader stroke approach, this is a very good example of how we um, address or how we approach wellness at our hotels and that in all of our, in our all day dining and in our, well, obviously it's breakfast and lunch and dinner, uh, we have a Deborah and a mindful eating section. So these are the guidelines specifically from food and beverage that that section would be uh, uh, these minimum guidelines with dessert and, uh, with kids menus and so forth. So I think I have another slide. No, nope. okay. So what it speaks to is that um, it's a good example of inspiring our guests versus dictating to them that they have that, they have that, they have, they, they can, you know, weave in and out of what they want to do with us, but the guests do have a choice. So if they want to eat lighter, they want to eat healthier on the third day, the first day, the whole time, it's up to them. And we do have that put in front of them uh, as their choice. So that, that's kind of the overriding principles uh, for us. 946, well, I'll get it for you. So then we speak about wellness meetings where I mentioned about all these things that we've done already are folded into these uh, also kind of dual roles. So the essential oils, the mists, we do that when they rent to the meeting room. We have these videos on the screen as breakout and so on and so forth. And we do our workshops and things outside. And these are addendums to the normal contracts for groups of mice and, and, and brains. So this is, uh, so wellness with us is obviously not just about adults. It's not so serious. It's certainly, you know, the spa is a place where you go every treatments, but we've created through the, through the um, uh, necessity with COVID um, uh, family retreats. So these are all day programs where the guests can um, participate with their children, leave their children, uh, drop them the whole day from like 10 till six, 
um, or do some things with them. And maybe they don't want to do yoga with them, but they don't want to do the birdhouse making or the treasure hunt. So it's, it's not really wellness as much as just kind of uh, sustainable, engaging, uh, educational, fun, uh, connecting community type of um, um, activities and programs that we do on, uh, this is so far Thailand, we were starting in Maldives and um, it just creates, I guess, more memories when they're on, on property and they're getting access to uh, sampling Muay Thai or sampling um, uh, some sustainable workshops where we're eating birdhouses or kites um, or tie-dye t-shirts. Um, and, and the parents love it because uh, they're coming to a hotel and um, not dropping them to the kids club to play videos or to, you know, use crayons or do those passive types of things where you just need a coordinator to watch them type of thing. We're engaging with them and we build relationships with them and they meet each other and they interact and we put them on teams and and do different competitions and things like that. So there's so much content and possibilities when, when you do this. So, uh, so that's that's what we do there as well for them. An example of the bigger picture events and activities I'm sure most do with Global Wellness Day or retreats and activities. Um, the top corner one, the blue one there, is one of the ones I can't, it'll take me forever to speak about it, but we did that one um, in the midst and the depth of COVID when we actually closed the spa, closed the fitness center, closed the children's club, but we didn't close the hotel. And the COO called me and they said, we have a closed gym, closed spa, closed kids club. What are you going to do for the guests and how are you going to do with all your staff? And we actually had a full retreat planned uh, the week before. And what we did was, you know, spend a couple hours and knocking around. And we said, let's just do that retreat in a smaller format every day. Because we had everything ready. We had the whole format. So, so that's an example of, because um, there's only, and it's easy when you start something when there's 6% occupancy, you can, you can do it. It's easy. To, the challenge is keeping it going when you get full and busy again. And that's where we are now. Um, and so this is an example of, you know, we'd have, um, I don't know if you can see it there, but we actually then did, uh, when guests checked in, they'd receive this uh, daily retreat. They received the map where everything happened. And they actually were able to book a private meditation session uh, anytime, complimentary, uh, for 20 minutes in the garden, right? So um, so that was what we did there. And that, then as it evolved, we had to do uh, uh, four, uh, group of four, group of six, and, and it's still there, but not to that kind of, customizable level, right? But one of the, I think the underpinnings of all this is that we were offering all of this, we didn't hire more people. Uh, we didn't spend a whole lot more money. We repurposed our, our teams. We conceptualized things, we uh, packaged them, programmed them, and we really maximized utilization because um, one of the issues I think that spas face or manages is that you're operating spaces with, um, I don't know, what is it? Okay, occupant, therapy utilization is usually okay, but overall your fitness teams, your people, they're not totally engaged with the guests all day long, like a housekeeper would or, or a waiter would. But um, um, you know, room occupancies, you know, back, what is it, 25, 20, 30 percent um, capture rate, two or three percent. You know, I was in Jumeirah. I had CEOs who wanted to just smash our spa and make a parking lot or make a restaurant or something. So, so it re gives us reignites our purpose. Re I think wellness reignites our importance, and that you know, to some extent, um, you know, I I, I biasly feel that, uh, you know, wellness managers and wellness and spa directors should become the next level of hotel manager in hotels. You know, who, who are we not to do that? I mean, we get, a, we get the door closed on us a lot of times from, you know, there's a corporate role and that's one out of a thousand, right? And we all want to grow and develop and, and have prosperous careers. But I think we need to start knocking on that top ceiling and saying, why are the hotel managers and the, and the resident managers coming from rooms, coming from food and beverage, when wellness is the key and the center of hospitality who is the better better department to take care of our guests in a spa, hotel than a spa? We're usually considered to be called the job or the crew, the jewel in the crown, and and we get the best, uh, you know, scores in emotional engagement and surveys. We're very focused and drilled in on guest service and on meeting the guest needs and taking care of their complaints if they're those are there and following up and building relationships. So I think I think hopefully in the next you know two to six years we can see there's only a few like. I can count two people that I know who are a general manager, and maybe that's not aspirational for some, but I think there's a lot of opportunity there to bring more value and to, and to turn these wheels more in this direction um, for our hotels and our, and our groups, not just have uh, you know, corporate directors or regional directors uh, in, in our hotel groups, right? Because we're not, we're outnumbered vastly, right? So uh, to kind of make a difference and uh, continue the fight. Right? The in-room wellness examples, that I'm sure you have and you're aware. But what we did a bit differently when I when I came on, um, they wanted to revert you know, 20 rooms to wellness rooms, so full full revamping um, to do so. And and my my take and my comments was just to set up kits 
right? So we set up a uh, full kit so you can go to a room and it's in the, you know, in one of those uh, bell car cards if you want to say that. And we just transform the room if somebody wants to book that suite. Um, and that we know we can do a sleep assist, uh, which more of the soft touches. Uh, we can do just a physical room. We put them both together for a wellness suite. Um, obviously, the nice room, there's a pool view. We change the shower, we change some of the hardware, but you don't have to pre set up every room to be a wellness suite. Um, but in a certain certain uh, wing, we're able to, to transform those rooms to do so. And that's only a one property. So the other ones for the, for the suites, we actually have smaller kits where I think I've got a slide here about it, where based on seven guest lifestyle uh, kind of aspirations, they can pre-book or we can upgrade them or complementarily provide them with a physical vitality kit, um, a mental detachment kit. We have a small sambo with a ritual card and a music playlist already done. So the small things, but um, um, the same thing they kind of add up again, all this is a lot, but um, it, you know, it, it, it adds up. Each one of them on their own are not massive, but, but they add up. This is the slide about the in-room experience uh, based on the guest lifestyle choices. So these are the ones that we have as kits that are available in our hotels. Just the Tannies. We have other hotels, the Syed, the uh, D2s, Princess, and other ones. But for the Tannies, which is a higher level hotel, this is the software for our guests. This one we just are, are trying to get, but we just implemented the first one on this last retreat where we did a rise and shine instead of a turn down. So in the morning at the wake up call, we delivered these to the media before their uh, first session. So they have some energy and some uh, positive uh, start to the day. Um, and getting our hotels, and they're very abrasive and very on board with this, instead of just the, the gifts or the welcome amenities to be fruit bowls, strawberries, champagne, and get it to be more intentional with uh, with some of these examples that, that we have for many more different things that, you know, that, that, that is an example. Oh yeah, so one of the bigger ones is, you know, um, the biggest, Thing, I guess I can say that we've made a shift in its design. So these are all things that we kind of rebolt on and reposition because our hotels are self-standing and some of them are 30 years old. We have new, new you know, we're opening DePaul uh, this year, opening um, Greece this year, uh, Kyoto next year, Bangkok next year, and, and others. So it's easier when we just start with a fresh slate, but most of our hotels are, are older and existing. And so we had to back in uh, all, all, you know, all the spa concept, all the new menus and concept. So we're in the process of doing that. But um, this one, uh, circling back to the bubbles at the beginning for the GWI, being the mental wellness industry, um, this is the big one that's had the biggest influence on me because it's what I came, you know, the, the pause, the backing of the pause uh, uh, tenant uh, uh, pillar, but um, in the design aspect. So when we start now, when we have a, a new design or a new build, Wellness is in the first meeting, if you want to say that. And so, um, because it's good to have all these extra touch points, but it needs to be anchored, I, I, you know, I, I, find, I find. So I think you might know about you know, the multi-sense experiences and building into architecture. And well, this is a slide just taken directly from them. And what that looks like in real time, actually, um, this is their new hotel in Disneyland, Bangkok. It's a premier location. It's, uh, it's, it's a combination of hotel, residence, mall, um, office towers. And this is the fifth floor cross section. I think we all seen these plans before if I haven't worked on them. And so the where the arrows are is the spa. You can see there's a pool and then uh, you can see the, the line delineated the treatment rooms and arrival. So this circular space there um, at first was a lounge, your typical walk-in, your soft plush you know, couches with your drink dispenser, some magazines where the clients would get picked up and you drop them off. Um, but there's a small, very this is a very small uh, footprint in a big city, busy city. Um, so I had to, um, do something different with that. But then also through the concept of decelerating, which is already in place and the pausing, and that in our treatments, we also have a, a two minute pause ritual actually, where we do like a meditation, a little mantra of breath work ensemble to start. I expanded upon that instead of just doing the treatment, created this, but well, you can see the picture, right? It's a sanctuary. Uh, the picture's there already telling the story for you, a holistic wellness sanctuary. So the guest actually in the bottom corner here changes into Thai pajama. Um, with slippers and they walk into this zone here, they lie, they have their seat, they have their chair. We do a 10 minute pre-treatment uh, ritual and still to be designed, but not too complicated, obviously mantra, sound, expanding upon what we do already, um, be it live or, or, or recorded um, in a mood setting environment um, as a pre-treatment. Then the therapist comes in, they come behind them, they collect them and they go to the other side for the treatment. Um, so it's a bit of a unique experience. Something in the city is a bit more relevant because you need to slow down, you need to kind of find time and, and really, I guess, decelerate and have access to this. So 
we're hoping it's going to be um, unique, a bit of a selling point. It's another reason to come back because it's not just a treatment in Bangkok and these you know, cities, you go somewhere once and then you don't go back to us as a deep offer. So we want to maintain our rate. We don't want to do that where we have to do, do offers and discounts and fight with the competition and not have an ongoing consistent full space. Um, and I tell you, it's, 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 it's quite rewarding, but it wasn't easy to get the whole hotel design to change to do this, right? The, the, the nervousness around this uh, wasn't, you know, uh, getting owners to build this into a hotel and, and, and trust, I guess, in me to some extent and, and, and obviously the investment of wellness to get to, get to this place. And now it's a model we're using in other, other new builds where necessary. But the other magical part to this is, again, when I speak about spas that are underutilized and, you know, we, we start at nine and close at 10, and uh, having having owners or having shareholders or having even just our, our, our direct ownership um, um, invest so much money into a space, I have a big responsibility to maximize that. So when this space um, uh, typically operates, say, the city nine until 10, this this is, this sanctuary opens at 5 a.m. Right? and it closes at 11. Because before the spa opens and after it closes, we're doing 20 minute rotating uh, rituals. So for groups, so we'll have guests come, they can pre-book, they come in, put on the pajama, they do a wake up ritual. So the lighting is different, the mood is different. We wake them up with a positive start to the day and we cycle them through for two hours straight. And then after we close at night, we do the go to sleep ritual. So it's a bit more relevant when you're in a city and you have a business meetings and CEOs to do this. And it's a bit, it's a bit Instagram where they can take pictures and, and uh, participate. Um, or media or VIPs, or if somebody wants to be compensated, or if it's an upgrade to the suites, then we keep them going through there. And obviously, we're getting them all into the space so they know where the spa is and we get to see them and they get to uh, hopefully uh, return and actually spend, spend money in there. And then we get to break it all down. If we need to, we can do um, um, active stretching class or, or we can do a wedding group time massage. So, in such a small space, we have one, two, three, four, five treatment rooms. We're able to actually uh, expand that to, I guess, 12, 14 uh, people at a time through through the kind of the group, group, group uh, uh, practice. Thank you. That's it. Okay, so. <laughs> so. Thank you. Hi, I can't unmute it. Wow, that was amazing. So uh, it's a bit I choppy because I'm just taking pieces of something. No, and, uh, it's, but, yeah. It's awesome. I don't know if anybody else has any questions. If they want to unmute, I, I definitely have one. Can you talk a little bit into, or just tell me what you mean by this ageist pro-aging that you had on the one slide? Oh, I think it's just more. I think it's just more marketing terminology. I think before, um, you know, when I maybe three or four years ago, we used uh, anti-aging. And now it's yes. pro aging. So accept that's all. Just it's 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 like a dated term or approach to what we think about and how we approach it now. That's all. And that's kind of the difference, right? Like yoga was important. You know, you want to say, you know, massage was the core, then yoga just permeated. Now it's like an overabundance of energy work. So it's just that progression, I think, of how we speak or feel or what the moving through our, our space. So yeah. I quite love it. So instead of calling a moisturizer an anti-aging moisturizer, we could call it a pro-aging moisturizer, right? Yeah, so it's beneficial, but it's not a negative connotation to it, I guess, right? We're not mm. stopping, it's not a bad thing. Right? So, yeah. I'm loving that. Yes, Mena, go for it. Thank you sorry, so sorry, very much that. for... Pardon? No, should I? Go ahead, please, yes. Okay. Thank you so very much for sharing... Um, your ideas about your beautiful spas. Um, you know, for me, the key is, and I've visited, I've had the pleasure of visiting many, many spas overseas and in South Africa. And I can just see by the attention to detail what the businesses are spending on the spas to create these wonderful experiences that you've actually spoken about. And many times, the experience is disappointing and i'll tell you why mm -hmm. because you come in with this vision you've read the menu so you who, who who the spa manager or the guest who what's your point no no as a guest okay, as sure. a guest okay. um i'm speaking about my guest experience okay but i also do training in spas okay so as a guest you go in and you can just see the attention to detail that has taken place at the spa. And I'll give you an example. 
The, I think the key to every spa success is getting the buy-in from the therapists and the commitment to do it. How do you do that at your spas? Um, is it maybe the culture of the people that well, are your therapists? You mean you, to do the buy-in of the culture to do what exactly? It takes it to, 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 do, to, to carry uh, out all these wonderful rituals, etc. Yeah. So, so in other words, okay. I've been to the most awesome spas where yeah. I know that there's fragrance, where yeah. I know I can just see the attention to detail mm -hmm. and I'll walk in and they haven't switched on the fragrance. Mm -hmm. They haven't, you know, done all the little things that sure. I know the spa is committed to. Yeah. Um, well, uh, yeah. yeah. It's just that to me, it drives me crazy. Yeah. 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 And there's, even there's, when I do my there's, training, there's, when I do my there's, training, there's, I go in and I yeah, say, yeah. you know what, people, your spa is only as good as your weakest link. Okay, if you've got a weak link, a guest will have an uh, uncomfortable experience or they will be disappointed and not book again or put a bad review. Say, I expected this, I expected that. The spa was wonderful, but the therapist didn't do everything that was written in the menu. Sure. So I'm sure. saying this from my own personal experience. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. So what do you do to keep your staff and make sure your staff do everything that's on the menu? <laughs> sure, you don't. It's impossible, right? But um, I have to say, I get. Yeah, I've experienced that. I've worked in a lot of countries, and some places it's very, very tough, and it's heartbreaking because you see it all, and you understand it all, and what you want, you know, done, and it's the best interest of the guests. So of course you have some 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 team members who you know who are checked out or they're not engaged, or actively disengaged. And, and um, I think it's a culture and over time, and it's sometimes it takes a short time to really change that. But I think leadership is it's all, it's all up to leadership. What do you, you can train all day, but how you treat your team and how you work with them. And um, I think that's massive. Um, but um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't think everybody in the spa industry is designed or built for it. It's a job for some and, and that's self-evident, right? And, and sometimes they, they end up leaving, but um, there's a lot of details. Yeah, it's not easy. I mean, I've done spas. We did 250 treatments a day, you know, back to back in the group days in Bermuda and stuff, right? It's very difficult, but um, um, it's easy for me here for the spa because the culture, the mindset of Thailand, they, they're they very uh, procedure driven. Um, if you They'll try to correct you sometimes. They want to do everything um, correct and right. And they're very almost to the point of like fearful that they don't do things the way they need to be done. Um, but there's that's that's the spa team because that's their design they're very great but getting these things done in a hotel that i mentioned to you that's the challenge right in the hotel teams because they're, they're not getting them I, i've had many conversations and i had explanations but getting us getting a front office agent who's done the job for 15 years to implement this is one of the most challenging things i've had to do so far in my career so that's one thing you're mentioning the spa issues now i've got you know spa issues plus the entire yeah, hotel, hotel. <laughs> So, so yeah, we're just, we just don't give up. We just uh, try to explain, you know, I've had, I've had, um, you know, front office people uh, who say, and I sit them down, okay, you, you, and what I would do in spas even, what's the obstacle, you know, what, what, what is it? And we come, we, we find a way to come around it, right? But I think leadership, culture, ownership for, for your team and what you're doing in there is important. Um, and having fun, I think fun, obviously, it has to, has to be part of the big equation, right? Um, but, um, um, you know, I've had front office agents who give me reasons so they, we, they can't do it. And, you know, so busy. I said, okay, well, how many, how many guests do you have checking in today? 20. Okay. That's a lot. I can see that. It's not easy. How many tomorrow? Uh, two. Okay. What time? Like 11 and two. Okay. So then, so just do what you can. I mean, try, try to bring it to them, but don't, don't just flat out not do something, right? You have to evolve. You have to grow. You have to continue to do more, right? I mean, I just came back with my team. We spent three days launching this whole big, you know, very complex wellness retreat and launching this facility. And we met today and like, okay, what's next? But now we need to do this. And so it's not a matter of breaking their backs over it, but every week, and I think it's kind of my build and my nature, but through working in the last two years through this situation, it's also really, I think, I think, and I feel, and I don't have access to everybody in the world by any means, but that there's a bigger bubbling going on because through the mother of trying to save our jobs and bring value and, 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 and do the, you know, make more money and do more with less, 
I think it's one of those things that are happening where through these types of conversations and, and what the good work that's happening, it's, it's there's a there's a turning point happening. I, I, there's a term for that, I think, but where there's kind of a yeah tipping point, right? Where we're moving into this zone. If we can embrace this and move in this direction, uh, uh, it's more of a one one unit that um, um, we can really really get somewhere with it. Right? So, you know. but yeah, it's ongoing. I don't have your I don't have a solution. For, I don't. I, it's, it's never <laughs> ends. It's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it drives me absolutely crazy. Yeah. And, you know, when you get therapists saying, well, it takes too long to do a prescription for a, for a client or for a guest, it, I cannot, I, I find that very difficult to, to comprehend. And yeah, at the well, same no time, boo hoo hoo, I'm not work, earning enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's, then, then, then it's clearly, I mean, it's a no, it's a no compromisable zone, right? You, yes. you do it, you don't want to do it, you don't want to, you know, just don't do that. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, Sorry, I'm hogging yeah. the conversation. I um, know, oh, it's perfect, perfect. I mean, you. my, my answer to that is consistency and persistence. So if the leader, if from the top, they are consistent and persistent, well, eventually they get what they need. They really do. Thank you so much. Does anybody else have any other questions for Paul? Thank you. Thank you for your time and thank you for staying up late for us. Um, You're welcome. Thank, yes. you. thank that you. That was amazing. I love that attention to detail. I found a new word today, micro moments. I love it. Am I allowed to use it, Paul? Am I allowed to use that word? I don't, I don't own it. <laughs> Because hey, I'm going to use it from now on in my training. Totally yeah. love it. And, up, and I guess it's kind of an answer is that everything makes everything matters, right? Yeah. Oh, totally holistically, love it. Right? Yeah. Holistically, yeah. it makes a difference. Yeah. It's brilliant. And also the pro aging thing. Now you've got my mind going with that. Anyway, thank you so much, everyone. Thank Can we have you. a checkout word? Just a message to Paul. If you don't want to unmute, type him a little message so that he can get some little boost of energy before he goes to sleep tonight. But that was amazing. Thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you, Mercy. thank you. So let's see what everybody says. Sean is grateful. <laughs> Mina, sensational. Mina, we're gonna be persistent and consistent. We're gonna persist in our mission. Oh, Great. look, Lisa says she's coming to visit soon. I think you should tell him to come here. This, this is in, are you in South Africa? She's in South Africa. She's in South Africa, yes. But I think you should come here. She says she's going to visit you. I think you should come and visit us. It's far away. <laughs> it's so are you far first. away for us? <laughs> okay. So I've we never have been, so yeah, anything's possible. Yeah. Cheers. Time to come. In yeah. fact, you should tell your hotel group it's time to, to head on over yeah, this not, way. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Catherine says, I'm sure we'll meet again. I'm sure we will. Yeah. Joyce is inspired. Umpo says, very much appreciated. You see, Lisa says, come to Cape Town. And Danae and Sarita are planning their micro moments. You see, they also love this word. And the love message it. to our guests, it's all good. Yeah. Devon. Okay, well, have a very good night's rest. And to those of you who it's morning, have the most beautiful day. And thank you so much. You're we welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Okay. Okay. Cheers, Paul. Go, Ellie. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Cheers.